in nothing better than coffee in the morning guys good morning everyone and welcome to coffee with steve so as i said before this is going to be a q a session meaning i will try and not dive into coding too much a lot of these questions that i have for this uh, specific episode are very technical are go related meaning i will try and cover them like generally and uh, you know give you my opinion about those questions but i will not dive into uh, the topic i will have separate videos for each and every one of these questions which are go related that's why we'll try and keep this simple we'll try and keep this in a relaxed you know and chill way so let's dive into question number one and there's a guy called kishore he's asking what is the difference between these free packages io buff io and io utils or io util i should say uh, and alexandre is also saying i'd also include the os package in the question as well so the simplest answer to this question is it all depends what do you want to use or what do you want to do like in your code if you try to do some operating system uh, operations like i don't know uh, write to a file uh, read some environment variable obviously that would be os package if you want to do basic io stuff uh, obviously that's going to be the io package if you want to uh, do um, complicated or a little bit more complex IO related stuff, you would probably want to use IO Util, which has a couple of helpers such as read all and all that stuff. If you want to use um, a package which does buffered operations, which I don't know, scans lines, scans runes, uh, has uh, specialized readers, writers, and all that stuff, you probably want to use buff IO. Now, again, depends what you want to do it all depends uh, what's uh, like your task what's your goal what do you want to achieve but the best way i've learned how to use packages and how to distinguish between these packages simply by trying one then trying the other seeing what's the advantage what's the disadvantage of the other if uh, there's a functionality which only one package provides obviously i'm going to use that package so this is roughly the difference between uh, these four packages so hopefully uh, Alexandre and uh, Kishore, those are my answers to you. Hopefully that answer your question. So question number two from Alexandre, could you please explain how the package context works and give us some examples? So speaking of context, it's a piece of functionality which is very useful in Go, which Go provides in its own standard library. And it's, it's as simple as that. Like if you open up the uh, package itself, it says package context to find the context type which carries deadline, cancellation signals and other requests scoped values and uh, yeah request scope values across api boundaries and between processes and this is really like the definition of context now there are ways and best practices on how to use context when to use context when not to use context but generally you want to receive the context from the incoming request and you want to pass that context along uh, downside uh, to uh, the consumer of that request so as i said before go does that already in the http library so basically with every request you have like when if we're talking about HTTP uh, request every HTTP request has uh, something called context and context is really something which uh, passes information along requests now a request doesn't have to come from an HTTP client which is a browser postman or anything like that a request can be a request which goes from your application to your database mysql for example that's also a request and uh, generally most libraries out there will provide or will uh, have a signature or in the signature of the function will uh, have the context so you can basically pass in the context you can uh, cancel the context you can um, create a context with deadline you can pass your custom information alongside uh, context and context is really like a small box where you throw in a little information which is very useful across requests. Now requests, as I said, are not necessarily requests incoming from the browser or from the client or HTTP requests in general. Requests can be different kinds of requests across applications and processes, just like the documentation says. So that's pretty much it on context. And I hope, Alexandre, this answers your question. Next question comes in from the same guy from Alexandre and he's also asking why is it so popular when we are dealing with users authentication well i believe you meant or you wanted to ask uh, what uh, kind of authentication types we can use like across uh, systems i don't know http apis and yeah like there are different kinds of uh, uh authentication and yeah authentication is really there to protect your resources if we're talking about rest apis authentication is there to protect your routes 
from somebody else accessing a resource which they don't own, accessing a resource which they don't have access to or they don't uh, have a specific role in order to access that resource or they don't have specific rights uh, to access that resource maybe they own the resource but they don't have the specific rights so again there are different kinds of authentications and i will most likely cover this in a separate video because this is a very advanced this is a very complex topic which requires a lot of explanation a lot of examples and all that stuff but generally just so you know you have things like basic off you can use off to you like there are so many ways to uh, provide in authentication like you can even go with the stupidest authentication uh, such as having an if statement and you know just protecting making sure that route doesn't get accessed by somebody else, somebody who doesn't own the resource, somebody who doesn't have rights to the resource. So there are routes which require authentication, meaning you have to provide in some user specific credentials and based on those credentials, you're authenticated then uh, based on your credential on who you are as a user, you can be uh, accepted or rejected depending on your roles. Again, uh, the complexity and the verbosity of this can go like very deep. It all depends how you implement authentication. It's really system dependent. There are standards out there, ways how to implement authentication and it shouldn't be complicated in Go as well. But that's, that's pretty much it, I guess, about authentication. This is as generic as I could answer your question. So hopefully, Alexander, that answers your question. And uh, do not get disappointed because I am coming up with uh, a set of videos when it comes to authentication, authentication types and all that stuff. Question number four comes from another guy called Kirill Kutin and he's asking, is GoPath still relevant or everyone is moving to modules? Now, I'll tell you this. GoPath is not going to go away because as you all know Go is trying to be backwards compatible with all its versions and there are like there, there may be versions of Go out there running in production which still don't support Go modules although I don't see a reason why they could not and even though we have modules you can really develop anywhere like you can develop your project on desktop or anywhere you want you have that nice uh, functionality of Go modules and speaking of Go modules by the way if you don't know what Go modules is make sure to check out this video right here but if you do know what Go modules is just so you know GoPath is not going to go anywhere and anything related to GoPath like the vendor directory and all that stuff most likely when the offer will create uh, the project or will initialize the project with Go modules they will uh, like name things exactly the same way as uh, the GoPath structure, meaning you'll have the same github.com slash user slash package or slash library slash package. You're going to have the exact same structure. Rarely you will have a structure which differs. Most likely you will have something like that in order to be compatible with GoPath. But to answer your question, yes, GoPath, you could say GoPath is not relevant anymore, but GoPath isn't going anywhere. So you could use GoPath, you could use go modules it's really up to you my recommendation of course use go modules because it's nice it's better it's it's just so much better than GoPath. but go path isn't going anywhere so just keep that in mind another question from uh, the same guy alexandre intro and quick example about go pipes uh, to give you a quick introduction about pipes again i'll make a video on that and Thanks, Alexandra, you just gave me so many ideas about what kind of videos I should make. So if you take Linux, for instance, it has pipes and those are like, like the most powerful thing Linux has, in my opinion, because you can manipulate and dictate really anything from a single command. Like you could have a small input, which is like the raw data and pass it through a bunch of pipes. And those pipes would just format, reformat, uh, I don't know, apply different kinds of logic on that input. So pipes and go really work like channels if you're reading uh, or writing that's going to be a blocking process meaning you have to handle that if you're reading you have to write somewhere else if you're writing somewhere else you have to read somewhere else and make sure they don't block each other and yes as I said before this is a very like generic explanation on pipes so you could really achieve the same thing with functions with channels with like anything that's like 
uh, similar to pipes and don't worry too much about pipes again this is going to be part of a separate video that's why uh, I will not try and stop too much on this uh, specific question. And the last question, which comes from a guy named Rygod, he's asking, I'm kind of wonder also uh, how you handle process from idea to finished product and what tools you use from uh, gears, best cameras to software for editing and all that stuff. So uh, yeah, to quickly answer your question, I've made a video where I showed my setup, so you can check out the video right here. Uh, but yeah, just so you know, at the moment I'm filming on two cameras, one of them is there, another one is over there I have a microphone which sits above me right here I have a couple of lights here and there I have a couple of lights here I have you know some uh, extra stuff over here just to make the the scene a little more beautiful and yeah when it comes to the process itself how I do things from the beginning until the end uh, again you can check out the video right here where I talk about all that stuff if you guys want me to make a video specifically about how I do things on the production or I should say on the post level uh, please let me know in the comments below i would really love to know that and if you guys want me to do that i will perhaps allocate uh, some time and do a video on how i do things behind the scenes maybe that will encourage some of you to start doing your own youtube channels your own uh, like start sharing your knowledge and do things maybe the way that i do things i don't know if there's right or wrong way of doing things it's really the things that work for you and i've learned that the hard way Mm. man this coffee is good so before we wrap this video up guys i wanted to quickly give a shout out to my newly joined patrons and i want to thank adrian vrabie i want to thank leon mura olesia Urso, jeremy Bafford, uh, henrik alexandre and nico maxian these are the new six patrons which have joined the journey which believe in the same dream that i believe which believe in the work that i'm doing and decided to support this project decided to support this community so again as i said before you've already done a lot for me you've already done a lot by simply being part of this community but if you want to feel like you're doing more if you want to feel like you're a bigger part of what you are already make sure to go ahead and support me if you feel like so so again guys that was pretty much it on this episode hopefully you uh, liked it hopefully that will encourage a lot of you to ask me more questions in the comments below uh, ask me more questions on social media Twitter Instagram Facebook really anything just make sure to use the hashtag coffee underscore with underscore Steve and I will try and search for all those kind of requests all those kind of questions also feel free to comment down below in the comments on any video and also feel free to like and share this video if you found any value and make sure to subscribe if you aren't already and be part of this community and without further ado guys i'll see you you in the next video peace